Hello everyone. We are back. Welcome back to our channel. It's been a little while, but not too long. Mm -hmm. um, today we're coming at you with a top 10 list for our favorite album artwork. So this isn't about the music itself, although it, we may like mention it, but it's more so about just really the album covers and that's really it. It's not our top 10 of all time. It's just the top 10 that's in our collection. Right. So if we don't own it, it's not in the, our list. So from our like 700 records, these are the, our individual top 10s. Yeah. So um, we have uh, honorable mention because we really wanted to include these in the top 10, but you know, others ruled over them so what's your honorable mention my honorable mention is say anything's as a real boy i know to some people it looks pretty plain and it's like whatever it's like a wooden nose um there's the back but i just really like how it ties in with the concept of the album there's a lot of songs that tie into this imagery um like chia like i shall grow and um there's just a bunch of themes in the album that tie into this whole concept, which is kind of why I didn't choose it, I guess. I guess it was more so about the music than the artwork, although I do think it is really cool. We were just talking about how you thought it was less art, but technically, this has as much art as any <laughs> other album cover. It looks blank, but it's not. It takes up the same real estate. Right. So. And the color of this one matches the cover. Yeah, really the color good. of the vinyl is like um, green, like forest green and just a little bit of light green in it. It's really pretty. I've shown it before in our colored vinyl video. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's my honorable mention. Alright, and my honorable honorable mention is Cruelty and the Beast by Cradle of Filth. I really like this one because she kind of looks like you a little bit <laughs> with her, um, her little bangs. Black and, hair. Yeah. And it's just really cool because it's Elizabeth Bathory who was a famous, you know, leader in history who bathed in her enemy's blood, which is really cool. And it's signed by the whole band. Mm -hmm. So, and the back art is really cool too. But yeah, I really like this one because it kind of looks like you and it reminds me of you. That's sweet. I love the album title too. Mm hmm So... Yep, that's my honorable mention. Alright, so let's get into our top 10. So, the reason that Say Anything record was in uh, my honorable mention was because this one is in my top 10. Uh, this is in defense of the genre. I really enjoy cartoony album covers. Mm -hmm. I like, or, and album covers, album covers with just a lot of stuff on it. I like being able to like stare at it and find new things. And this one has got just a bunch of people fighting. It looks like medieval, but then you've got like old people with walkers and then like the same thing on the back. And some of the themes of the album tie into the artwork, but I also just really like um, looking at it. There's like a bunch of weapons and there's little kids. It's just very cartoony and um, pretty cool. And I like, I really like the purple as well. Mm -hmm. So. That's in my top Let me 10. see this real quick. It seems like it's all old people on this side and all young people on this side. True. Are they defending this genre? Yeah. From the older generation? I would say so. That's pretty cool. I never realized that. Me either until right now. There you go. <laughs> nice. Called it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, my first choice is Jar of Flies by Alice in Chains. Why is, why is this so cool? It's I don't know. It's just a really good photograph. Yeah. That mason jar with their logo on it is so cool. And the colors are just perfect. Mm -hmm. Those flies are... You know, sap is pretty cool too, but not as cool as jar of flies. Yeah. So yeah, this is definitely in mind just, just because it's a really good photograph and I love those colors. So yeah. And I, I kind of like album covers that don't really say what it is. Like, it just says Alice in Chains. It doesn't say Jar of Flies or anything. Well, it does, but with a picture. Yeah. A really literal like Jar of Flies. Yeah. The spine is really cool, too. Yep, that's my first pick. Alright, so my second one. We are just talking about this yesterday. 
and yes, you could argue this is a Bloody Kisses knockoff, <laughs> but I love this album cover. This is um, Born Without Bones Baby. I don't know why. I could just stare at this picture for a really long time. I, don't, I guess it's just the facial expression and I love the orange and red tones of this album cover. There's just something about it. And then even the back, like you can't see it that well, but it's them again with their lips and stuff. And I like how it's not like full on like making out or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's definitely like sensual, uh, but in like a romantic way, which well, definitely like ties into the, the title of the album. And not to mention, this is an amazing album, but most of the ones that we're talking about today are amazing albums on top of having amazing artwork so mm -hmm. that everything that you just said about that one i could say about this one mm -hmm. how they're not kissing but you know they are it's still like sensual or yeah it ties into the romantic part of this album which it's not this whole album isn't like that but the green it's just perfect and the colors mm -hmm. And then the back cover is so cool. They're they're all standing in the graveyard. But yeah, everything that you said about that one, I'd say about this one. Mm -hmm. Hold that one up next to this one. It's very similar. I really wonder if they got, like, inspiration from this. I would assume so. It's just so similar. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Typo negative went with the girls. And then Born Without Bones went with the heterosexual relationship. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just cool. weird because her face is like hers, like pretty much exactly. Yeah. Besides having her eyes closed. Yeah. It's interesting mm -hmm. to compare and contrast these two. Yeah. So those are both of our next picks. And Typo this... negative, along with white stripes, is like one of the most consistent artwork bands with their artwork because like mm -hmm. everything's green and black. Yep. Every album besides um, what is it, with the red cover. Well, it was dead that again, was, but that was originally a green cover. Yeah. But yeah, this is my favorite album cover of all time. Nice. Alright, is it your turn or mine? Your turn. Nice. Alright. This one, again, to some people it might not be that big of a deal because some of the, like, the title of the album and the band, like, takes up a lot of space, but this is so <laughs> iconic to me. I love that. Look at that head in that frying <laughs> pan. This is, if you can't see, but Primus uh, Frizzle Fry. I just, it's so, it's very like Primus. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's like the eyeballs are crazy. The teeth are crazy. The head's crazy. It's mm -hmm. in like green oil. Um, there's droplets everywhere. And yeah. it's, it's very... I don't know. You can definitely stare at it. And then these heads on the back, like, weird. I, I love, like, weird, like, and it looks like claymation almost, mm -hmm. which, you know, a lot of their music videos involve that too. And I love how, like, the red underneath the pan. I don't know. Something about this album cover catches my eye. Yeah. I do love, I also love Primus's, um Tales from the Punch Bowl album cover. But I like the old one, not the reissue. I like the actual, like, spoon faces on it. But this is definitely um, my favorite Primus album cover and one of my favorites of all time. So that's why I included uh, it in my list. Yeah, I really like that. I like that little guy. Yeah. He's cool. Look at those teeth. Look at those he looks eyes. He like a little potato. He does. Yeah, he's cool. All right. All right, so you can't really talk about awesome album covers without mentioning Iron Maiden because literally every single one of their albums has amazing art mm -hmm. and it was hard for me to choose between <clears throat> Live After Death um um why am I blanking? Peace of Mind. That's what I was about to say if I were to choose an Iron Maiden album cover it would have been Peace of Mind. Mm -hmm. I mean I probably like that one more than this one which I choose Power Slave mm -hmm. but I re I'm really into Egyptian stuff and those sphinxes and the pyramid. It's just a really cool concept. And then on the back, you can see you're looking out of the pyramid. It's just really creative and 
you know, there's a bunch of hidden stuff on here. Yeah. But I mean, you could you could choose any Iron Maiden album cover, and it's yeah. just awesome. So. It's kind of ironic because Peace of Mind is like one of the more simpler album covers, I would say. Like, mm -hmm. there's not as much detail, but I don't know. That's just my favorite of theirs because it's. I love that image of Eddie in the straight jacket yeah. and the padded cell. Yeah, I have a jacket with that with a big back, back patch of that on it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think I prefer that art, but I just really love the concept of this. Yeah, that is really cool. And this is a gold stamp promo. Nice. So, yeah, that's my next choice. All right, so my next choice, this is from my emo days, but this is Panic at the Disco. It's pretty odd, and I know to... And, you know, just anybody, it doesn't look like that much. But this, there's not a, this is one of the albums where, like, the artwork perfectly describes the album. Yeah. Um, all the florals, it's a very pretty sounding album. A lot of acoustic guitar, um, some wind instruments. And I wish this was the version, the like, the first press version that has, like, the fold out and everything. Because that, like, even more, like depicts the album this is just a reissue but the version that's like 300 200 300 dollars on discogs like it's got a bunch of inserts in it and a bunch of like i don't i don't even know because i don't have it but a bunch of different things inside it we that showed I really that one. want yeah we showed that in our most wanted vinyl record video. yeah but this is just it's and it's pretty odd it's pretty and it's odd, so I don't yeah. know what else to say about it, but I, I love the floral, and it just really ties into the album really well. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool album cover. Mm -hmm. All right, this is definitely probably in my top five album covers of all time. I mean, this is classic. He looks so creepy on the cover. It's Rob Zombie Hellbilly Deluxe. Um, I don't, I don't know. I just love this so much. It's so colorful mm -hmm. and he's so creepy. And uh, the back cover is really cool too. He's definitely super scary. Those yellow eyes. Yeah. And um, this was drawn by the artist who did all those classic monster drawings of the, like the famous monster um, magazine. So yeah, I mean this is an awesome album, and the, I think the cover like really shows like what you're getting into mm -hmm. because it's creepy and you know it's really metal yep so rob zombie hellbilly deluxe is my next one nice all right well my next one is a <clears throat> um heavy metal album i would say um this is my favorite judas priest cover and one of my favorite album covers of all time this is british steel and i have a t-shirt with this on it and we work um with kids so we can't really wear like too controversial t-shirts but come the weekend I usually wear this t-shirt mm. um but I just love I don't know this is such an iconic image to me yeah and I know some people would probably choose like screaming for vengeance over this one and that was close but I don't know I just love how simple this is I'm a sucker for simple album covers that just like speak for itself like jar of flies like mm -hmm. you just look at it and you get it or it's a simple image but you can it still catches your eye and keeps your attention and this is one of those that like that does that uh, yeah this is probably my favorite priest album cover too mm -hmm. i don't know i just like razor blades and how they look yeah on the back too is, is pretty cool because the razor blade is slashing through yeah and they got pictures of the band and stuff but obviously the star of the show is the front definitely and I, it just makes me think of holding a razor blade in my hand, and it makes me, like, cringe a little, and but like, in a good way. The glowing, like, around here between the fingers and the shadows on the fingers, it's just perfect. Yeah. So, this mm -hmm. is why it's in my top ten. Alright. My next one is my favorite uh, Manson cover. This is amazing. It's a uh, portrait of an American family. I actually, I have a big poster of it up there that you can't see. But yeah, this is the Simply Vinyl Pressing, which is really rare. Um, Manson made this album cover himself out of, like, claymation. Um, just putting it together, I suppose. And that logo is so awesome. Definitely, is that your favorite? Yeah, definitely my favorite Manson logo. 
Um, but yeah, it's just so creepy. You just, I don't know, sometimes when I see like a shitty trailer in real life, I just imagine this being in there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The, the back's pretty cool too. It's just got, got some pictures of them. Um. What do you think of this one? I love it. It's it's so creepy, and every time I find something new, and I was actually wondering what you guys think. We've talked about this before, but I think those are rib bones. Like, mm -hmm. I'm starting to think that too. We don't know exactly what they are, but to me, they look like rib bones. Yeah, I think they're rib bones. And that little plate or something down there. At first, I thought it was like banana slugs or something. But this little thing has a penis sticking out. And then mm -hmm. you got the beetles up here. Some be beetle bobbleheads. It's um, one of those album covers where it's like, you've seen it a million times, but it catches your attention every single time. Yeah. And his belt buckle says, nobody ever raped a 38. And I like how, like, I like how it's like, it's claymation, right? Yeah. I like how imperfect it looks. Like, mm -hmm. the skin and just, like, the... I don't know, the positioning of it and how big the hands are and I don't know. Yeah. Look at his eyes. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah, Manson made all those figures and set it up like that. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Yep. So, yeah, this is definitely my next one. And another thing, this little kid right here, I always look at his arm. There's like, is that like a track mark? I don't you know. It's see, a red spot. Yeah, see that red spot right there on his arm? Right there. Is that like a track mark or something? Because that's fucked up. Which Could makes be. it even better. Could be. So yeah, that's my next one. Cool. Alright, so anyone... I think I've talked about this album cover before. Uh, I know I've shown this album before because I've done the White Stripes collection. But this is so iconic. Get behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. The White Stripes. I love this album cover yeah. and I, I I love all of the White Stripes album covers I, I think they're very unique I love it's so amazing that I stuck to a theme for that long same can be said for typo negative mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine being a band and sticking to the same couple colors for a decade or more um, and I, I, I and again it's very simple but it makes you look it makes you think, like, why are they pointing at each other from behind? And a lot of the themes and song titles, like, tie into just this picture. Like, she's holding a white apple. It's very, like, I don't know. And there's, like, a microphone. Yeah, this them. microphone up here. I think um, after this one, like, um, I could have easily chose, or anybody could have chosen Elephant. Because there's a lot to find on that album cover. But this one is my personal favorite. And these pictures of them are so adorable. Um, it's probably my favorite era of the White Stripes too. And I love just this look. The, the hat and the mustache and the black, the dark black, or the longish black hair. The, the um, what's this called? The little soul patch. Yeah, the little soul patch. It's just a very fitting look. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I love the White Stripes very much, and <clears throat> this is definitely my favorite White Stripes album cover, so. We waited for a long time to, for this one to come on. Oh, it. my gosh. It used to be so expensive. But as soon now as this it's came like out. 17 bucks. I got my hands on it. Yeah. So. Um, I, I really like that one, but I think if I were to choose a White Stripes cover, I would choose Icky Thump. Nice. I just like that picture of them sitting there mm -hmm. and that's my favorite era so maybe it has something to do with it i don't know probably all right this next one is really evil yeah it's merciful fate don't break the oath found this at um the record fair we have a our record fair video shows this too but yeah we love merciful fate um i think i like the album melissa more than this one but this is you know, you can't go wrong with Merciful Fate or King Diamond. Mm -hmm. This album cover is just so evil. Yeah. It's just like Satan coming out of fire. Yeah. I mean, you can't get it. It doesn't get any better than that. And then on the back, I think that's probably King Diamond down there coming out from the shadows or something. Yeah. Like a church. 
It's on fire. I like how, like, the album cover, it's like he's standing in fire. Yeah. And, like, like pointing at you. And, like, telling you to come here or something. Yeah. And, like, but, like, the fire, it, like, doesn't even phase him. Yeah. he's Satan. And so it's very scary. Mm-hmm. And evil. I like how bright it is, too. Like, when you think of an album this evil, you would think that it would be, like, all black. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, gold. And it's super the, vibrant. Yeah, and the, the vinyl in here is, like, the same color gold. Nice. So we were really lucky to find this. Mm -hmm. Because Merciful Fate records go for, you know, they're not easy to get. Right. Um, they but, get scooped up. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, yeah, this one is definitely a crazy album cover. Yep. Which... You know, we love. All right, so my next pick. <clears throat> I debated about including this one, but I decided to include it after I realized that I have a poster with this on it, as well as my debit card has this artwork <laughs> yeah. on it. Um, this is Green Day's Insomniac. Um, and one of the reasons I chose this is just because it's one of the ones where you find something new to look at every time mm -hmm. you look at it. I love, and I know, like, Green Day didn't ask somebody to, like, design this. It was, like, already art before this album was conceived. Mm -hmm. But I still do love the artwork very much, and I think it's very fitting of the album. Um, and I love how Billy Joe's guitar is right there. And even the back is amazing. Yep. Um, you can see my... That's supposed to be up front. It's opposite way around, but oh well. This is the Hot Topic one. It's kind of, um, it's blue. And I don't know. I love it. I love that lady with the uh, optometrist thing on her face. Mm -hmm. That really stands out to me. And this guy up here at the dentist. Really yeah. That really looks like Jack Nicholson from Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. Um... Yeah, that's the stuff that stands out to me. And I really like their logo in this era, too. Yeah, I do, too. It there's looks... this... Um... Go mm -hmm. ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say that, There's too. this hat that just says um, Insomniac in that font. And it goes for, like, $100 on eBay. I was going to mention that uh, white shirt with the black ringer that has that monkey on it. <sighs> and this, this whole cutout. That's really cool. Insomniac era merch, I want. Because I have a lot of Dookie era. I don't have enough Insomniac era. And it's one of my favorite eras, so. This, <clears throat> it's an interesting album to me, too. Because, like, following up Dookie is, like, crazy. And I don't think this really, I don't think it, like, lived up to Dookie as much. But it's still an awesome album. Mm -hmm. It's just... It's kind of a weird period for the band, I think, but you know, that's not that's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's it's like a weird transitional period. Yeah. To um, you know, like Nimrod and late nineties. Definitely. So yeah. I couldn't not mention the album cover that's on my debit card. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> true. Alright, so we mentioned Merciful Fate and we oh, got we gotta man. mention King of Diamond too. Because his covers are awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna get this off here. This is show me. this is definitely the best King Diamond cover. Yeah, that mansion is just so creepy. The purple sky. Ugh. And uh, the grandma's wheelchair down here in the corner. And uh, the font is really cool. Mm -hmm. And that moon. I have a shirt with this on it. Um, you know, when I discovered King Diamond, this just this album cover is just so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and the back is pretty cool, too. It's got some pictures of the band. King sitting in the wheelchair. Is that a forest behind them? Yeah. Yeah. Some trees and stuff with an axe. An axe. At the bottom. You can choose a lot of King Diamond covers, but this is definitely my favorite. And, I, like, with this house, I think it's creepy because not only is it, like, a house just alone in the woods, um, but there's just one light on. Yeah. Up, up like, in the attic. Which is very telling of, you know, the story mm -hmm. with this. And, uh, I don't know. It's just really cool. Well, the concept album, the artwork has to match. Like, I there's so. not an option. The artwork has to match that mm -hmm. all of the songs and stuff. Yeah. And this one does it. It's pretty fucked up shit happened up there. So, I guess that's why the light's on. 
Yeah. So yeah, that's our next choice. All right. Well, my next one, um, again, I couldn't not mention one of the most iconic album covers of all time, which is Green Day's Dookie. Yep. I have like a million t-shirts that are from Dookie era or have Dookie artwork on them. And, um, this is not obviously the one with, um, was it Bert or Ernie? Which one I was don't know. it? I think it was Ernie. With whoever it was, um, because of, I guess, copyright stuff. Yeah. But I love, absolutely love going through and reading all the little words and stuff. Yeah. This uh, monkey down here saying throw, like, I, I love that. And then you can just, there's a bunch of different things. Ozzy's uh, on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that's the girl from the Black Sabbath cover. Yeah. Right there. There's just a bunch of different things to find. It's like, um, I it's, like a, it's like a punk Sgt. Pepper, you know? Yeah. So, couldn't, couldn't not mention it. I love this album. Love this album cover. Love this font. Um, Definitely. Yeah. So, and I, I do love this back picture, but I like it better with the, the doll. I have the CD with it on it, but mm -hmm. not the, not the album, so... What always stands out to me is obviously the girl from the Sabbath cover. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, Fat Elvis right there. Mm -hmm. And then you have Angus Young somewhere on here. Yeah, Angus Young up there. Yep. Up there on the building. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to find in this. And obviously the Bad Ear Blimp is funny. Mm -hmm. Lots of funny and like um, just humorous things to find on there. Yeah, and interesting. This little pumpkin guy is cool, too. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, another one in my top ten. Alright. Um, I couldn't really have a good album covers list without, you know, something Megadeth. Because I really like their covers. And for some reason, this one has just always stood out to me. Um, I don't know if it's because of, like, the pirate, the pirate style font or what. But I choose Killing Is My Business. Um, a lot of Mega fans don't like this version of the cover. They like the, uh, like the animated mm -hmm. version that's like, was just put out and was reissued and stuff. But I like this, this cheaply made cover because it screams like 80s. Yeah. And, um, you know, the pirate font is like, that's my, that's definitely my favorite Mega font. Um, you know, I could have chose Rest in Peace or countdown or whatever but i really like this one mm -hmm. because uh it's dark obviously the font again mm -hmm. and you know it's cool that it's like a real skull and not a drawing yeah i think that's like aluminum foil <laughs> and then dave said that there's like some ketchup down there or something but i don't know the cheesiness just adds i don't know i like it yeah what do you think i kind of like it too i, I definitely you said it enough but the font is amazing yeah the red and then i i like the chains yep over here those are really cool do you like this over the animated one i think so i think so yeah okay yep so that's our next one all right so my next one is one of the first album covers that i just would stare at mm -hmm. i would listen to this album and i would stare at this album cover and I remember, like, I used to listen to this album, like, in middle school, and I would have friends over, and they would be like, what is that? Um, I'm talking about Marilyn Manson's Mechanical Animals. Mm -hmm. um, again, an album cover that speaks for itself. It's one image, but that one image is enough to, you know, make you think. Um, I do love your huge... Oh, you don't have it up. I have... Your, your huge poster with I this I have a on huge it. poster of that album cover. <clears throat> it was meant for, like, train stations to hang up. Mm-hmm. How, how Which, how... Inches? How did that even come about? Like, how many hanging? inches do you think that is? I don't know. How much it, is a regular poster? Like, your bloody... Like, Christmas 24 one? by 36. That one's gotta be, like... It's probably, like, 40 or 45 inches tall. Yeah. It's huge. It's It's ginormous. But I love, like, 
the concept of something being not human and something be like this is very it has both aspects of being like female and male um like the bulge like mm -hmm. that's male but then the tits that's female and, yeah. and the hair and the makeup and stuff and um, it's got like and the yeah the fingers like six are fingers. creepy they're very long and like the positioning of the body is creepy because yeah. the arms are super long they're like Almost all the way, like if he were to stretch it out all the way, it'd be like down to his knees, probably. This gray just goes so perfect with the hair, too. Mm -hmm. And just, I don't know, this is one, of, I think this is one of the images, like, obviously this was not, like, when he was first coming about, but, like, this is one of the things that made people really question Marilyn Manson, so it's mm -hmm. very iconic. Um, and just, even the font too, just yeah. plays into the sound. It's so weird, but it's like, it's very, uh, I don't know how, how would you even describe that font? It's like very mechanical. I yeah, don't know. Like digital kind of. Yeah. It's, it's, di yeah. With I, that, like that's the, the numbers. Word. That's the word I'm looking for is like, it looks like digital. Yeah. And a lot of the songs. User Friendly is on this, right? Oh yeah. User Friendly is one of my favorite Marilyn Manson songs and it's, it, ties in well with this yeah. image and the the original pressing in this reissue came with two separate lps because it like split it up for some reason and this second lp is i like the cover of that too yeah definitely not as much as this but you know that's pretty that's cool super too. cool this glove looks like almost fingernails but mm -hmm. it's not this crazy. is definitely the star though yeah he's got like a little scar on his belly down there yeah like tiny, it looks like a couple small scars. Yeah. Near his pelvis area. Yeah. But anyway. Just a perfect album cover. One of the first ones that I was just like, what <clears throat> is that? And sparked my curiosity for Marilyn Manson. So yeah. I, I love this album cover a lot. Definitely creative for the time too. Yeah. Even and though the 90s was like a renaissance for weird stuff, but that's just perfect. And like edgy. Like yeah. This was so edgy. But yeah. Love this one. Alright. This next one is, you know, it's pretty fucked up and creepy. Um, this is the corn self-titled. That picture is just scary, dude. Mm hmm You got the little girl on the swing. And then you have just like some fucking predator with a claw. About to... Some creepy shit, About dog. to grab her and do who knows what. Um... But that logo is awesome. I love the color. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the ones that we've chose have, have, have like... Very vibrant. Very cool, like reddish, orangish covers. Yes. So, you know, you feel bad for that little girl and stuff. And that, that shadow of the Predator is just so scary. It almost looks like Freddy. Yeah. I would say. If the claw had a few more little slits, it would look like Freddy. True. I would say. Yeah, you just wish Chris Hansen was in this other swing or something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the back continues the playground set. What do you? Uh, this has nothing to do with the album cover, but what do you think your favorite song is off that one? Um, I mean, I'm just gonna be simple and do Blind. I like Blind, but uh, Daddy is so fucked. Which up. yeah, which also plays into this Predator thing because you know Daddy is about him getting molested by his dad. So fucked up. And. Obviously, this girl's probably about to get molested and maybe killed. Was it you that was telling me that Daddy, like, it was inspired by molestation, but it wasn't his father that molested him? It was oh, his yeah, uncle yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like something that? Like but that. he wanted to make it more, like, I don't know, I guess relatable? Yeah, I think so. And I think this one comes with... Oh, it's just a big booklet. I thought it was a poster. But, uh, you know, some of the pictures in here are pretty cool, too. So yeah, that's our next pick. That's just a really fucked up mm -hmm. cover. Alright, so we each have one more. And my last one is very near and dear to me. Not just because it's one of my favorite bands, but... Ghost. Mm -hmm. it's Opus Eponymous. And as you can see, uh, Papa signed it, and Alpha, and... What's the other one? Omega. Isn't Omega a different symbol? Oh, yeah. Or, or was it Air? Alpha and Air. 
yeah. signed it. Um, I met them a couple years ago. It was amazing. Got this and uh, another album of theirs signed. But Ghost is um, the only band I can think of that like the majority of their artwork is inspired by horror movies. Yep. Old school horror movies. Um, and as you can tell, this is uh, Nosferatu. Salem's Lot. Oh, Salem's Lot, I mean. Damn, I um, hate to be Nosferatu. known all, dude. No, Nosferatu is the other one. I think it's on their shirt. Yeah, it's that one shirt. The Infesta Sumam, that's Amadeus. Yeah, I got it mixed up. Um, but I love... I don't know. I love how they like put their own spin on it. Mm -hmm. This castle, and I love how it's like blue and the moon and the bats. And just everything is so creepy. Yeah. And I love Papa One. Yeah. Papa and One. Papa awesome. Three signed that. Yep. But as we all know, we're all the same. But anyway. Good one. Man, I look like a dummy. I meant to say Salem's Lot. Oh well. <laughs> I was thinking of that one shirt. They yeah. have one shirt that looks like it. Yeah. But well. I know exactly what you're talking about. All right. All right. And my last one is Him with Razorblade Romance. Um, this cover is just perfect. It, I think it represents the album mm -hmm. just perfectly. Yeah. Because you got the pink, but also he's looking like a rock star with the cigarette and the tattoos in the uh the fancy jacket um and that that pink heartogram is awesome i have the heartogram tattooed so we're, we're really big fans of this band mm -hmm. um thankfully we both got to see them mm -hmm. before they quit <clears throat> uh, i don't know this pink just really stands out to me that artwork is very like goth glam yeah but not in a bad way People which is think, exactly like, what this is People assume, like, glam is, like, cheesy, but, like, in this way, it's, like, really good. Like, right. the pink, like, it's hard for me to think of a lot of bands that come out with a pink album cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, and him went for it. And, I mean, I think it worked out for them. And, obviously, to have a front man such as Villa Vallo, why would you not display him like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shirtless, with his tattoos and stuff. Right. Uh, and the cigarette hanging out of his mouth. And I think... Another thing that plays into it is, like, if you look closely, you can tell he's wearing makeup, mm -hmm. eyeshadow, and uh, lipstick and stuff. Yeah. And it kind of plays in with the, um, a lot of the songs that they write, or that they wrote, I guess I should say, are very feminine mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a very good way. Yep. Um, very romantic, which I, I, I really like. Definitely. So. I mean, this album cover is just perfect. Mm -hmm. I have a big poster of that too. Yep. So yeah, this is my last pick. Cool. Well, thank you guys for sticking around for our top 10 album covers. Let us know what you think your favorite out of ours is and let us know what else you'd like to see in the future um, yeah. with our videos. We're having, a, we're having kind of a hard time figuring out what kind of videos to make. Mm -hmm. um, we thought this was a good idea and uh, we have we have a couple of ideas, but Y'all should comment and tell us what you would like to see. Yeah, we always like to um, know what you guys want to see because sometimes you guys want to see things. And <clears throat> sometimes it's things that we rule out. We're like, nah, nobody's going to watch that. And then somebody comments, hey, can you do this? And we're like, okay, we'll do that. Right. So let us know. And thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. That's right. See you.